I'm Deborah Himes, um, I'm Regional Corporate Affairs Manager for Tesco for, for this area. Um, and at the exhibition with me today is P uh, Pete Rathmel from IPB Communications. Do you want to say hello? <laughs> hello everyone. <laughs> the voice behind the camera. Yeah, hello the face. <laughs> <laughs> and there's not much room to have three people here, but Pete might come on and say something as not yeah. very quiet. Okay, well obviously we're here in Church House. Um, we've got the display and you were here yesterday for the first time. Yeah. Um, could you just give us a sort of a very brief overview of the proposal uh, for those who can't actually come here? Of course, yeah, 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 sure. And thank you very much for the opportunity you know, to speak to people through the blog. It's, it, you yeah. know, it's great to have that opportunity, like you say, for anyone who couldn't come along or for anyone who wants to hear a bit more. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean the, the, the um, plans behind us are for a small supermarket, a small Tesco store, which would allow people to do their weekly grocery, their weekly food shopping within Kirby Moorside. So um, we do understand that um, there are a lot of people at the moment that leave the town to do their shopping. And actually, if we can provide a, a good sized food store within the town, that will help to stem what we call the leakage for people leaving the town. Um, so the store itself is a, a small um, grocery store. Um, it, um, it would employ about 100 people, so that's 100 new jobs being created um, within the town. And it sits um, on the junction of New Road and Ings Lane. Um, and uh, one thing we're keen to do is ensure that there's good pedestrian access up to the town centre to ensure that there's good pedestrian flow between the two. And why Kirby Moorside? Well, I think for the, the reason I just mentioned, really, the fact that we know that so many people are leaving the town to do their food shopping, going out to Moulton or to York and to other areas. Uh, so, you know, it seems like um, a real opportunity to be able to keep people shopping in the town. That, that, that uh, knowledge, how did that come about? Tell us about the survey that you did. Well, there's um, a number of um, elements of, of research that we can, we can do. One was the, the council um, survey that, that, um, that we've quoted in, in some of the literature we've sent out. Um, but also I think sometimes our own club card data can show where people are travelling from right. to use other stores. So there's a whole host of, um, of data out there. Right, okay. Can you tell us a little bit about where we are in the scheme of things in terms of the proposal. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sure. Well, I mean, this is our opportunity to hear from, from residents in the town what they actually think of the proposal. So, um, this is very much our consultation stage. Um, when we've uh, held the consultation, then, you know, based on the feedback we get, we'll have the opportunity to change the plans if people have said, you know, they, they don't like certain elements or they'd like to see us doing something differently. Now is the chance for us to, to improve those plans before we submit a, a formal application to the council. Right. Uh, which we'd hope to do probably at some point in October. Uh, and then, of course, then a, a formal consultation period starts. So just as soon as the application goes in, that doesn't mean it's the end of consultation. People can then uh, you know, continue to comment on the, the application. What if, hypothetical, we're only one day into it, we've got another day of talking to the local people. What if the majority of the local people said no? Would you walk away? I think it's a, it's a bridge we'd have to cross um, as and when we, we came to it, if that were to be the case. I mean, actually, the feedback we've had so far has been very, very positive. Um, we've been very encouraged, very pleased by the feedback we've had. Um, but, I mean, that's something we'd have to cross. You know, has that happened before? Uh, it has happened in other locations, yeah. And, yeah, and there are locations where we've withdrawn plans. At that stage, just yeah. because... So, in a sense, if, if the local people did, that would be a consideration if... Um, whether it's your survey or another survey, produce a result where the majority of people within Kirby Moorside didn't want to have a Tesco's, that might be the scenario that you might actually walk away or you might do something else? Or? Well, there's always a consideration. I mean, it, there, yeah. there could be all sorts of things. We will look very seriously at the feedback we get. Um, you know, sometimes there's feedback about the size of a store. Right. So we may review the plans, change the size of the store, there may be comments about the access about highways, all sorts of things. I mean, that's, you know, that really is a reason for being here, yeah. um, to understand what people think. So now, I think you know, we'll, we'll then analyse the comments that we get back um, you know, from residents, from, um, from, from stakeholders you know, a, a around the town. Is the, the consultation that you're doing there, is that independently audited? Do you, does that go through an independent organisation or, or do those results of this evaluation just stay in house within Tesco's? Um, they are um, they're, they're, they're assessed by ourselves but we then usually um, put the results into a document that's submitted to the council with the planning application um, so it, you know as such it is an auditable document 
Um, we've, we've normally put the results... But they're not independently, or the results aren't looked no, at No, they're, they're sent back to us. They're either put yeah. in a box in this room or they're posted back to us. Right, right, OK. Could you tell me a bit about the land, then? Because, obviously, living in the town, there have been lots of rumours about a supermarket is coming, don't know which one, and then it was Tesco's, etc. Is it going to be down there? You know, and suddenly, it seems, I think a lot of people feel that suddenly stuff's been put through the door and it's Tesco's have landed. Yeah. Could you tell us a little bit about the timeline as to when Tesco has bought the land uh, and I... how long it's been in your mindset to, or your planning to come to Kirby? Okay, gosh. Um, I mean, I, I, I suspect it's probably been years in the research in right. terms of looking for locations where we think, uh, you know, it might be suitable for a, a Tesco store. Um, in terms of the actual deal itself, um, I'm not sure when that was, when that was actually signed, um, right. but we don't own the land. Okay. So we have a conditional deal with the landowners, with the developers, so that should we get planning condition, uh, should we get planning permission, then we take, we take the land at that point. Is the land, or who is the land owned by then? I don't actually know, to be honest. I don't know who the... the, the is it the, the developer landowner. that was creating I the houses down there? I assume it is, yeah. Assume because it was... It was quite coincidental yesterday, but I was at a friend's house and somebody just walked in through the door and said that they were interested in one of the new houses. Yeah. Had got to the point of last week, the, just the, um, the, the next day, she was going to put her £200 deposit down on the house, mm. only to discover, as a Kirby resident, that a Tesco's was going to go down there. Right. Um, and it was only through some fortuitous thing that she didn't actually put a deposit down, but as obviously in her mind, not wanting to go ahead with the house. And she did actually say that there was at no point was there ever mentioned that there was going to be a Tesco's there. Right, right. So are you aware sure, of that? Do you know at all who the landowner is? Or do you know when the deal was was? I don't, I don't know the, yeah. the, the timelines or yeah. exactly. Well, obviously they're not, too, they're not too keen on publicising the fact that there's going to be a supermarket you know, right bank next door. I'm not sure. I think they've been quite keen for us to put the application, to mm -hmm. bring the application forward. Okay. Well, they obviously haven't mentioned it to perspectives. Yeah, I, I couldn't speak on their behalf. No, the fine. Okay, so can we talk about um, traffic? I mean, there's obviously a, quite a lot of concern over recent years. The traffic on the A170 has increased. So can you give us an idea of what the increase in traffic levels will be on the 170? Obviously, you talked about pedestrian access across, um, yeah. which is absolutely vital. Mm. Um, what's what's going to happen? Okay. Um, I mean, um, traffic assessments will be done as part of our planning application. So we will submit a full assessment of, of um, you know, what we anticipate traffic levels to be and how we can mitigate that. Um, I, I'm going to... It would well, be our highways expert who's here for the consultation who would know the numbers in terms yeah. of in terms of additional additional. Well, I think we would probably levels. anticipate that a lot of the traffic is already on the road because we do believe a lot of it is travelling outside of the town to do the shopping. So s certainly some of the um, traffic will be um, sort of displaced trips. There'll be you know trips already on the network that are just coming to this location. Um, in terms of delivery vehicles, we'll be looking at about five, uh, between five and eight delivery vehicles a day coming right. into the site. Right. So, you know, we don't see that as being, um, you know, particularly onerous. And that, you know, that, that we, you know, if if, um, if it was wanted, we could dedicate certain routes for them to use. You know, if that was something that people were, were concerned. Well, about. obviously they've got to come into. There's only one way into town and one way out of town. Uh, there's the 170, okay. and that's what it's going to be. Um, so I don't think there are many alternative routes. In terms of your distribution centre for your goods coming into yeah. Kirby, where is your distribution centre? Um, well, they come, they come from a number of different ones, because some would come from a fresh site, some would come from a, an ambient site, uh, and then they come from direct from some suppliers, so the bread and the milk would come from direct suppliers, so I'm not sure at this stage exactly where they're coming from. Oh, okay, okay. But obviously the markets that you've, you know, Basing it in Kirby, you're, you're a nice central point. You've got Helmsley and you've got Pickering. You'll obviously be wanting to pull some people in from those centres of population. So, although I'd say there'll be a lot of passing traffic, and particularly during the summer months, you must be thinking, great, you know, we've got all that holiday traffic whizzing along the 170 um, that will be popping in and perhaps buying, you know, picnic stuff when they're on their way to the seaside or whatever. And it's very clear on, on the 170, there's a Tesco's. 
Um, but obviously that traffic from other times of the year, those, those population centres are really important to you, aren't they? Well, I'm not sure we are looking at attracting from Pickering necessarily, because they have got the, the co-op in Pickering, mm. haven't they? Mm. Uh, Hamilton may, may, may be a different matter, but um, you know, I'm not, we're not really an anticipating drawing traffic from too far away. Right. You know, it isn't, we don't expect it to be a real destination shop, it really is just about serving so the, the local the, the Kirby So the Kirby market's really quite important. Yeah. Okay. Um, can you tell us something about the jobs? Because you mentioned 100 jobs. Can you sort of unpick that a little bit in terms of what those will be? Yeah, yeah um, of course, yeah. yeah. So 100 jobs, um, I mean, they're a mixture of full and part-time. Um, you know, as with any superstore, we like to employ uh, a mixture of, um, of um, full and part-time because that right. helps, obviously, with, right. you know, matching um, f for the hours that we're open, making sure that, you know, we can, we can ensure a good customer service level. Um, and there'd be a range of jobs, anything from, um, you know, replenishing the, the shelves, um, stock control, um, uh, checkout assistance, of course, customer service desk, um, team leader roles, section manager. And can you give me an idea of what the salaries are for those kind of jobs, the um, hourly rate for those kind of jobs? Well, I think um, the starting level is, um, is it £7? I can't actually remember. £7 an hour? I'd, I'd have to check. I mean, it's certainly well above... Uh, minimum wage. Right. Um, I know that we were we were um, one of the first supermarkets to to raise the limit recently. Um, to was it, I can't even remember if it was above seven or eight. So I'd have mm. to check. Sorry. Mm. Um, but I mean, we we are certainly one of the industry's leading payers, um, and we get good benefits package as well. So um, you know, it's not just the the salary which is well above minimum wage, but there's also a very good pen pension which is a defined ben benefits pension. Um, you get a staff discount when you've been with us for six months um, over a year and you start to get free shares every year and right. things. There's a whole host of benefits that, that come along with that, plus uh, career development opportunities. So, you know, I think often people see retailing, see supermarkets as a, you know, as, um, as, as simply filling shelves and there aren't many other opportunities. But um, Certainly, from my own experience, I know that there are. You know, working for a mm. business like Tesco, mm. there's huge opportunities to progress. And this is going to sound incredibly sneaky, but this is the you know, this is the time of the internet. So when you start doing searches, you come across all sorts of mm. things. Now, I came across a site that's um, a forum by Tesco's staff, and it's called Very Little Helps. I don't know if you're aware of it. I've heard of it. Yeah, yeah. and it's you know, I didn't get a lot of time, and I know that you're a massive employer. Um, and that obviously you're going to have, uh, a, you know, within that huge workforce, people are very unhappy because you're that big. But a lot of the issues that they were talking about are things like sickness benefits, about things that you're talking about there, about the opportunity for promotion. Lots of them were talking about the fact that I worked for Tesco's for a certain time, now I'm being told to move and I have to go to another store and I'm actually not being given any choice over that or I lose my job. Or, it, you know, it could be things like hours. Uh, be made to work really long hours. It might be things like overtime, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So, what do you? How do you see Tesco's? I mean, you're you're wrinkling your face, sort of. Well, but how do you see Tesco's in terms of an employer? Because obviously, this it was quite a big site, and there was obviously a lot of you know people saying, "Ain't that good?" Yeah. How would you answer? I, that? I, I think I'm wrinkling up my face because it's always so very disappointing, you know, to hear about sites like that and and to read some of the comments on there. It is very disappointing. Um, I, I, I think I can only say that's not my experience. I mean, I've worked for Tesco for, I think it's 15 years now. I started in store, um, and, and it's, it's, it's not my experience of Tesco. I've really enjoyed working for the business. Um, and I think, you know, loyalty is something that is very important to the business. Um, you know, I think, well, I know for a fact that, you know, all, all the store managers are tasked with having, having you know, um, the one in 10 people within their store on development for the next level. So, you know, there's, there's very much a focus on succession. And I think as well, you know, for a business the size that we are, growing the, the way that we are, it's critical for us to keep people moving up through the business. And um, the majority of our managers are appointed from within. You right. know, they're not recruited externally. So, um, you know, I, I, certainly f from my perspective, I, you know, I've seen opportunities out. I think there are opportunities in the business. And I, um, you know, I think Tesco does a lot to look after its staff. I think, you know, I think there are, clearly there will be in cases where people are disappointed sure. and I think 
we don't always get it right. Of course we don't. Yeah. You know, we employ over three hundred thousand people across the UK. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm sure we do get it right. I mean, I, I yeah. I mean, I, the one one sort of thing that seemed to be coming through quite a bit in a lot of these comments was was stress levels within work, and that often, you know. We all have stress, but under in, under sort of current economic circumstances, um, Tesco's are finding it quite hard, and that, that staff are actually being not being replaced, and so people have been given, you know, more work to do, but the same hours. Um, are you finding that that's that the stress levels and, and issues related? I mean, this is the economy we yeah, have. Yeah, it is. It's a tough problem? times. It is tough yeah. times, um, and retail, I think, you know, is one of the most competitive industries. You know th mm. that we know, mm. isn't it? Mm. it? It really d and and people, um, people vote with their feet, don't they? You know, if you don't like, I mean, uh, I think there was a statistic came out of the the last competition commission inquiry, which was, um, you know, quite some years ago, that um, that that ninety five percent of the population, I think it was of the UK, has a choice of three or more supermarkets mm. within a fifteen mm. minute drive. Mm. And, and we do see a lot of what we call switching, you know, people moving from one supermarket to another to do their shop. So as much as we like customers to be loyal, um, you know, that they aren't necessarily. And I think it is a very competitive industry. But, you know, I think if we as a business are pushing our people so hard that they aren't able to give the sort of service, um, you know, that, that, that will uh, engender loyalty from our customers, then we'll be foolhardy. So I think, you know, if that is something that people are saying within the stores, it would be important for us to listen to that. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, I mean, that is interesting, really, because it brings on to the next stage the growth of uh, the supermarkets. I'm going to hit you with a statistic. Big four, the big four supermarkets. Percentage of UK supermarket spend in the early 90s was 47%. It's now 75%. Okay. So you've got 2,500 stores plus across the country, and you're planning to increase it by 10%. The, the new chief, chief executive is indicating an increase of 10%. So you're driving... This is very impressive. Driving, <laughs> this, is a, this is an hour this morning on the internet. Uh -huh. So, But it's interesting, really, because I think, you know, you've got a new chief exec. Mm. Food, he's saying, it's highly competitive, as you're saying. You've got all the others out there that you're in competition with. And he's indicating that non-food sales are the way to go. You haven't got it right so far, but you're going to go, that's what you're going to go for. How will that affect a, a store like Kirby Moorside? Non-food, will you ever have, at the mo have you got any plans for non-food? No, there, it's very not? much gross. I mean, I think people have different idea about what non-food might yeah. cover, um, because some people would say, well, um, you know, our toilet rolls and kitchen yeah, hand yeah. towels, are they non-food? Well, yeah. you know, and some categorise that as non-food. We wouldn't, you know, we'd say that's your grocery shop. Um, so, you know, there's probably an element of cards within the store, greeting cards, and, you know, there perhaps be a little bit of toys, maybe a, a tiny amount of seasonal. Be, you know, the size of the store isn't big enough to have mm -hmm. a, you know, a big range. And, you know, I think it's a small site, isn't it? So, you know, any plans to extend the store in the future um, would be fairly constrained, I would have thought. They would there, but I think there's a feeling in town, we've got a printing works on the other side of the road there, and there is talk that that might develop at some point. And it is a pattern of Tesco's that they might, you know, come and put, well, other, other, other superstores as well. You, you, you start off with one and then there's another and you change the focus of that particular store so it might move from food to non-food, but you develop a food. Do you see that happening along the 170 on that site? Um, I certainly don't in the short term, certainly don't at the moment. Um, and it's quite unusual for Tesco to split non-food and mm. food. We, mm. we like to have it in the same store because so it's, you might, it, you it's might convenient. So move I, over the road and have a much bigger store and that could be oh sold gosh, off. No and idea. So. No, 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 it's no. interesting because on the blog at the moment we've got a, a photograph exhibition of uh, The Way We Were which was a, yeah, a local yeah. photographer who yeah, saw that. Yeah. You know it's lovely I mean it's you know 10 years ago uh, 2000 just over 10 years ago and he came around and took photographs so we've got a hundred of photographs of the town as it was in 2000 and that time it was just about the time that I moved into the town as well. So at that time there were, you know, two bakers, uh, two chemists, mm. two fruit and veg shops. Now, now we're down to one of each. What will happen in ten years' time? The million dollar question. Well, it's, million it is. Question. It is. I mean, I mean, the statistics say. Sorry to throw you with statistics, but I think they're important. That you know, um, local shops will lose between 
13 and 50% of their market when a supermarket comes to their town. So the, the little independent shops around here, which are probably operating at a bit of a margin, you know, tough times, not big profit margins. Government reports that we're a big supermarket, lands in the town, they will lose between 13 and 50% of their, of their market. I'll, I'll give you those, but okay. I don't want to sort of bore it with giving you references. But it's a, it's a government report that was, that was done. So, I mean, it, it makes sense, because otherwise, if you weren't taking... I totally take your point that there's going to be traffic coming along the 170 that wouldn't come into Kirby. But obviously, you're providing a place where everything's available in one place, instead of having to go here, there, and everywhere around the town. People will be able to go down at times that suit them, have a greater range of stuff available, cheaper. So our local shops will lose. Well, I can completely, I mean, I do completely understand why people are worried about the local shops and why people have a perception that, that local shops may suffer. And I think one of the, th the first things that we did um, before the exhibition was to visit the traders and say we're going to be here to make sure that they did know because as much as we can publicise sure. you know, in the newspaper or you know, with leaflets, pe pe sometimes people miss it. So we were very keen to go and visit and say we will be here if you want to come and talk to us. Yeah. And we are very keen um, to understand what people think, you know, what, what, um, how, well, I suppose how we can work together. Because from our point of view, it, it is important to us to be in a town that's thriving, you know, that's doing well. Because I think it's, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it works together, doesn't it? You know, if people are coming to the town for, for the market today, for example, for, you know, to visit the shops in the town, then that brings benefit to us, doesn't it? It brings footfall. And then if people are coming to us, you know, there's additional footfall to, for link trips into the, the town. So I think it's important for us to talk but to the trains about... it's even better for you, actually, if everybody comes along the 170 and actually just comes straight to you and does all their food shopping there rather than coming up into town. You don't really need them to come up into town, do you? Well, I think we, we do want to be in a thriving town because, you know, the knock-on effect of a, a healthy town is that, you know, there's, there's um, good expenditure in the town, isn't there? You know, that people want but to live there. But Deborah, there's, and there's, there's it's a, it's case a after town, case so. where, I mean, we can't deny, there's case after case where big supermarkets do take traffic away from towns, the, 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 the town centres. You know, there's hundreds of examples. Well, I, and so the, the, it, it is inevitable that that's going to happen, Yeah. I mean, it would be interesting to know as you walk around Kirby Moorside to know, I mean, for example, the co-op. How will the co-op with a limited range, 100 yards away from you, survive? Um, I expect they will be impacted. I expect they will be Do impacted. Do you see them surviving? I don't know. I haven't, in, in all honesty, I haven't known a co-op to close as a result of a Tesco opening. Within a hundred yards of it, and with a much smaller range. With well, I, I don't know. I mean, they will have to compete. They certainly will have to compete. In my experience, I don't know of any co-op that has closed in a town as a result of Tesco opening. I don't. Right. And I, I expect they may object to it, and I expect they'll be concerned about it. But I don't know of any closing. Um, and I think um, I think good retailers do survive. I think good retailers that know their customers, that have loyal customers, as many of these shops do mm -hmm. within Kirby Moorside, will, will, will continue you know, to see that loyal trade. And I think, you know, for example, the butcher does a fabulous, has a fabulous offer. You know, we won't have a counter within our store. So you know, I'm, I'm certain that those people that currently do their shopping in other locations and still use the butcher will continue to do that. Why wouldn't they? You know, why would they change that behaviour? Um, I mean, I think there's there's lots of ways also that we could work with the local traders if you know if if, if they'd like us to work with How them. How might so, that happen? Um, well, there's also all sorts of things um, that we could do, um, and I, you know, every town is different, so I don't want to sure. I, you know I don't want to um, make assumptions or or, or suggestions because it, it might not be right here. Um, but in other locations, for example, we. Um, we you know, can help to market the shops that are in the town within our store so that people visiting our store that might not even think about, or, you know, may not have normally gone into, into the town might actually think about it. So we can have um, boards that, that, um, you know, that market the shops. We've, in other towns, we've done maps um, you know, with sort of the different so shops. So you have something that says, here's, here's a board celebrating 
the local spa shop or the local co-op shop or um, Bainsley's well, Food and Veg. Well, Direct I imagine there will be specialist shops that want to be promoted. I can't imagine the co-op would probably want to be in there, but I guess if they wanted to be, we'd have a... <laughs> it just doesn't seem to make sense that yeah, actually you'd be promoting. Sort of, I mean, it sounds nice, but it doesn't. I can imagine you saying, "Yes, well, we'll promote Victoria Rose because she's an interior designer," or I'll, you know, I'll promote, um, uh, you know, uh, I don't know, one of the other shops in West End DIY. Great, because we're not going to be doing DIY goods. Realistically, you're going to be promoting other stores in this competitive market where your boss is saying we've got to get ten percent more. Well, we have done. We have done it in other locations. I can well, assure other you. Other that. grocery stores. Uh, I don't know if we've done it for the car or spa. I'm not well, sure. Well, that's what that. I mean. I mean, yeah. I think you know we mustn't sort of. Well, no. I okay. think partnerships important. Perhaps you could tell us a bit about the because lots of people have rightly raised things like great Tesco's are coming. They do a lot with kids, so maybe our local football club could benefit. Can you tell us a bit about? the kind of support you might be able to offer the town. It's a thriving community, loads and loads of activities going on for all ages. It's one of the great things about this town. Mm. What could you do to support them? Yeah, I, certainly, I get that sense to all these people who live here. There's mm. certainly a pride, and, mm. and, and it certainly seems like a very active community. Um, I mean, there's all sorts of things that we do as Tesco, corporately. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will be already aware of the... Sort of the, the um, uh, vouchers for, for schools and clubs, so equipment for, for schools and clubs. Um, we provide you know, school equipment or, or computer equipment that's been running for years. Mm. And obviously having a, a Tesco in town means that there'll be more vouchers, I expect, for local schools mm. and clubs. So that's one way. Um, and there's all sorts of things that we do um, nationally that would help locally. So um, some, some F, sometimes we run FA skills for local football clubs and that sort of thing. But then on a local level, I mean, the store management team, the, the, the team, I mean, the team within the store will hopefully come from the local community. So there will be, you know, real vested interest in being involved in local events and being involved in local, um, local activities. Um, and those things range from all sorts of things from, I don't know, whether it's people coming into the store to collect for charities or backpack through to us having um, kids from local schools in doing work experience placements and you know, things like that. I think we do try and look for um, opportunities where we can make a practical difference, where we can get practically involved in things. Mm. Um, the, in re recently in Harrogate, as you'll be aware, there's been a huge thing about Tesco's wanting to get into Harrogate. Um, and it went to planning recently. And um, there's this Section 106 money, which we, you know, the town has benefited from local housing developments in recent years with S106 money, which is helped us develop our play area, which is great uh, and coming along. Now in Harrogate, um, I think it's over one and a half million pounds has been offered by Tesco's to the county council with S106 money. Now you can call it sweetener, you can call it community investment, whatever you want to call it. Um, even though the Harrogate Chamber of Commerce is saying we don't want it because we know exactly what effect Tesco's will have on our local businesses. So, you know, Chamber of Commerce don't want it, but the planning committee have given it the okay on the basis of this S106 money. Now, is there going to be S106 money coming from the Kirby store to be spent within the Kirby uh, area? Mm. I know you referenced Harrogate, you mentioned the change. Mm. Actually, there was a lot of support in Harrogate for the store. It was, yeah, it, but not it the was Chamber very well of Commerce. Supported. It was a, a, yeah, there was a gentleman within the Chamber mm. of, of Trade who was, yeah. who was really quite opposed to it. Um, I'm sure there will be a section 106 from this store. I mean, you know, the section 106, I'm not a planner, I'm not technical, yeah. but as I understand it, um, section 106 money that can come from a development um, must be very linked to the development. So it must be about where um, there's, you know, believed to be, um, where, where money can mitigate impact of a store or enhance the benefits that the store brings or the development right. brings. Right. So it would have to be very much linked. And I think if people have got ideas, you know, for what... Um, what wider benefits the store could bring through Section 106, we'd be very keen to hear about yeah. them. You know, there's something that we could discuss with the council, so if people have got ideas, let us know. Right. Are you getting lots of ideas? Do you sense that, that people are coming through the event? Have you had a chance? Yeah, we've had quite questions on the 106. I mean, that is that is ultimately the council will, will yeah. set out the 106 payments, and that is often things like road improvements. Um, but as Deborah said, if we can link something in perhaps with the improvements to the wider town centre, the, the main street here, then 
then that, that can be included. But it's very much looking for those sorts of comments, mm -hmm. I'm sure. You'll appreciate I haven't been through the 200 or so that left. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't but a quick look through. But it, it will be really interesting to see because from the certainly from the conversation, there was a good awareness from the people who attended yesterday about the planning process and, and 106 came up a number of times. So I'd, I would expect that we would hopefully have some good suggestions of, of, of sort of how the town can be further improved by, by the investment, by the new store. Mm. But we'll see. We'll, mm. we'll let everyone. I'll let, we'll let you know. <laughs> I mean, the, the planning process is interesting, isn't it? Because you will go through the process of um, the consultation, and then you'll, uh, as you say, in October, that will go through to county. Now, there is the feeling that at the county level, the count, county council are under a great deal of pressure because if they were to uh, go against the application, then Tesco's will appeal, and that's at the point where almost inevitably, councils back off because of the cost of the appeal. What do you say about that and, and, and the kind of the power that big, not just Tesco's but other stores have in terms of, um, you know, going against actually what local, what local councils are wanting? Well, think, Simply because I mean, they can't planning, afford it. Planning law, well, it, planning law is set out in government policy, isn't it? Mm. Um, mm. And I think, you know, it, it's set out for people to follow. And it's, you know, I think it's set out clearly for good reason, isn't it? So uh, I think it, it, it's incumbent on us as a business, isn't it, to follow planning law. Well, of course. Um, but the So there may be sites in certain locations that we really, really rather fancy, you know, but aren't suitable, uh, you know, in what's set out by government in law, and therefore they're not sites sure. that we pursue. You know, this site, um, we believe is one that you know works well in terms of planning policy and therefore mm -hmm. you know should be acceptable hopefully you know is acceptable to local residents in terms of what we're proposing but also you know should be acceptable in planning in planning policy so you know on those grounds and assuming that we can um, address you know any questions that the the, the uh, planning officers and, and committee would have about things like highways about things like flood risk about drainage and all of those you know, critical things, um, then, then you know, hopefully there should be no reason for them to say no. Um. Mm. So when will we see the? Because obviously there, are, there are quite big road implications down there with the, the amount of traffic and the surveys haven't, as you're indicating, the surveys haven't been done yet as to. Have the what surveys been done? So I think some of them will have been done in terms of in terms of the detail of those. It would be the the highway specialist who's attending the consultation events over the over the two days right but there isn't any information here about well not the, there will be he'll be here at two o'clock no, there's nothing presented here <laughs> okay about what in, terms of, in terms of the yeah in terms of the, the the detail the numbers involved in what are very sort of complicated traffic surveys broadly speaking we are looking to increase the capacity of the roundabout down at, um, uh, by the site there so that um, any so can you traffic. say what you mean by well that would be that, that would be um, adding a dedicated uh, turning lanes from the the a170 coming in each direction so so by having um, I think as you can see behind me uh, sort of a, a straight on and a right lane and also a left turn lane uh, coming in on each side that will increase the capacity of the um, of so the, you're talking about road widening there. Yeah, potentially in, in terms of um, yeah, so to, to increase to increase the capacity, yeah, it would involve it would involve a bit of road widening. Now that's that's as we have it at the minute. We'll we'll obviously get local input on that, and and indeed, the highways team at the council will have their own thoughts as to perhaps the best way forward. So, this is where we are at the moment, um, and you know we'll see how we go as we get into the when we get to submit a planning application. That's when the really detailed work will start with council officers looking at our proposal, the the, um, the traffic modelling work that's been done, okay. the with development scenario, how many additional trips. I mean, it's a, it's a very detailed um, process, but the that work to an extent really really gets going when the, when the council officers, the highways team, have a plan to look at once the planning application Will the local population be able to see that in detail before it goes? It'll be part of the planning application will be. Right. Will, will be the, will will the, be the will highways assessment. 
But the question is, will the local people be able to see that? Because obviously once it goes into planning, you have a fixed period of time to respond. Yeah. Would it be possible for the local people to see the details of that before it goes to planning? You, you, usually all the documents are uploaded onto the council website, so anyone right. with access before to the internet... The, uh, before the formal application is put in. Oh, not, not, not prior. No. The council uploaded to the council website, so when they receive an application, all the documents are, are uploaded. Yeah, so, so you so just have can... that, that, that window of... Of, of three months, thirteen weeks is 13 the weeks. usual usual time. Well, that that's the that's the target for the um, the council to make a decision. So there's three months for people to look in detail at it and make their comments. It's not uncommon for um, the planning process that thirteen weeks to extend if there are still issues being worked Why, out. So. Just it's a pretty stupid question, but you've obviously got a very nice display here. Why isn't that work done? And about the traffic and the the uh, impacts yeah. put available at this point. Why is it left? Well, it is. Well, it, it, it uh -huh. sort of is Sorry. within um, our traffic consultant being here. So if people have got questions about it, they can ask him. I think if it's something that comes out through the consultation exercise, you know, that, that is significant, that people are worried about, or that they don't feel that we've been able to answer their questions, I think that's something we can follow up on. Mm. But he, he will be here at two o'clock to speak to people. He was here yesterday, you know. So yeah, I just think you know, and uh, you know, these are obviously very glossy and very nice. I just think it would be really good to have another display out, really outlining this is what the traffic increase is going to be. This is what the road layout is, layout is going to be. These are what the increased you know pollution levels, whatever it might be, the noise levels. Because it's got quite a few houses along 170 already. Um, I just think that would be quite good to have up front from the very beginning. Yeah, I mean, it's it's rather it's just a level. A chat, you know. I yeah, mean. I mean, it's 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 a it's a level of detail that. You know, we we get into at these events uh, in terms of um, in terms of the the display panels that you see. I mean, we try and summarise the proposals, um, mm -hmm. and you know, we're always looking to improve what we do in terms of the consultation. So you know, we'll take that up. That I think traffic certainly. is an issue that people. Well, are if, if it's something that people you know are blogging about and are, you know um, are mm. interested in hearing more about, I'm sure we could yeah, find definitely. some more information. Great. Yeah. Okay. That'd be good. Yeah. Okay. Um, There was a comment on the blog that said, there's a lot of positive comments about Tesco, and uh, as you have seen from the poll, you're winning, um, and there's a, there's a lot of positive comments about um, uh, what you will bring to the town in terms of competition, because there's obviously some people who feel that the high, the high street shops need a kick out the backside. Do you think that's what they'll, Tesco's will provide? Well, I think we will provide competition, inevitably. Um, I, yeah. Yeah. Competition. I, I mean, I think competition is good for consumers. Well, well certainly when we see competition, uh, you know, it, it helps us. It but if I was, if I was a local retailer, and you know, I'm the only person running this particular shop, how can I compete against you? You have massive purchasing power. How do I? How on earth do I begin to be able to compete with you? Well, speaking from a personal level, as someone who uses shops, and not necessarily speaking as a, a Tesco spokesperson, yeah. I think, I think small small shops, specialist shops, um, can offer something that uh, you know that Tesco can't. So you know we don't offer. We, we won't have a counter, as I said, butcher's mm. counter or a fish mm. counter. Mm. You know, so we can't offer that sort of level of service. Um, you know, on, on, on products that people are looking for in that area. Um, we, we'll have a, you know, for example, a small selection of cards. We won't have a shop full of cards. Um, you know, we won't be doing, uh, you know, I'm just thinking about other um, green grocers that, that, um, that, that are near me that do deliveries, home deliveries to people, you know, do orders and home deliveries. But you do um, Well, we do. Good, well, we do, um, we do from, from, you know, we do, yeah, but you, we charge for delivery, and we also, you know, they're generally a, a big grocery shop, isn't it? I'm just thinking of things yeah, other, other, yeah. other um, though, stores do. You know, it's going to um, be tough, isn't it? There's research no research in Penniston. We've got this board up about some research we did in Penniston, where um, we opened a store maybe about two years ago, and um, you know, there was there was real concern, understandable, real concern. Um, about amongst the traders in town about what impact a Tesco would have. So we went back and did some interviews with people to see what mm. they thought. And you know, you can see on the board there, there's a fishmonger and there's a greengrocer who said that actually, 
you know, people were concerned about it, but, you know, th that wasn't, you know, it didn't necessarily need to be the case. So, you know, we can, contrary to a very popular <laughs> belief, we can coexist, I think, very well, you know, with good specialist retailers that, you know, that, that do a good job, that offer good quality, that offer good service. Yeah. I think just coming in on that, I mean, supermarkets mostly compete with each other, so um, we're talking here about Tesco competing with the other independent retailers on, on the high street uh, here, but primarily this store is going to be competing with the shopping that's done by Kirby Moorside residents in York, in Moulton, they're going to the supermarkets, and when they do that they're doing other things, you know, as we found yesterday, people going for an afternoon, going for a cup of coffee, going for lunch, and they do their supermarket shop as well now. When that happens in those places, that's great for York and Malton and for the businesses there that Kirby Moorside residents are going and spending their money out of the town. But that brings no benefit at all to Kirby Moorside in terms of the traders here. And if we can bring some of that trade back into te back into Kirby Moorside, back to the, to the Tesco store, and if some of those shoppers choose to go and do something here while they're in the town, choose to go and get their meat from the butchers, go for lunch, go to a cafe, then that's the knock-on benefit. I think that's why it's in line with, with national planning guide, guidelines to try and bring your supermarkets towards your town centres so that there is that benefit of linked trips. Um, and I think that's obviously something that came through yesterday that for right or for wrong, most people are using the supermarket. And I think um, having it more convenient, but also with the added benefit to the other traders in the town, we believe certainly that will bring, bring benefit to Kirby more side. Um, an increased footfall in the town. When, if it all goes according to plan, mm -hmm. when do you think mm -hmm. you'll be seeing it? What's the usual sort of timeline? Um, oh, um, this will be a long answer, I'm afraid. But um, <laughs> normally, I mean, you know, once we get the application in, which we think we would do in October, sure. I mean, what sort of feedback we get, um, it should be about three months to be determined to make a decision. But often that slips a bit longer, so it's unusual to get a decision within three months. Once we do get a decision, if it is a positive one, if it's a, an approval, um, you would, we would normally allow um, at least three months, which is a period of which uh, sort of judicial review uh, that whether the decision can be challenged. So we wouldn't really do any activity. There's a period in which there's sort of um, legal the conditions relating to the planning application are sort of resolved. Sure. Once all that's sorted uh, and it's on our build program, uh, we think it would be built in about six or seven months. So, right. so under we, a year. Uh, I, th yeah, I think we'll probably, probably be looking around 2013. Yeah, uh, I, by I'd the time be it's sort of all rumbles through, and then yeah, we can get cracking. There's usually also this uh, normally uh, pre-construction work that needs to be done right. before the actual sort of construction right. work. And parking for how many? Oh, about eight, yeah, about, well, about 86, 86 within the proposals as we have them now. Right. Um, and free. Yeah. Yeah. I just stress that because some supermarkets charge. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes people think, you know, you're going to charge, but we're not. But obviously that's an issue for local traders as well because we have a car park in town. Maybe this has raised an issue about that, but we have a car park in town we have mm. to pay for. And so the concern would be, oh, offering free parking. Now, obviously your, your wish is that people do some shopping down there and they'll cross the road and they'll troop up the street, uphill and up the street and do some shopping uh, in town. Um, and then, I mean, how long do you have? Two hours? Well, uh, we, it would be unlimited. We don't, we're not intending to have any limits Unlimited on car park. So you I could mean, go down there in the morning, park your car, do a bit of shopping and then walk up into town, do a bit more shopping, have lunch and you'd be fine and go back to your car yeah. a few hours later. Yeah. That's what we, that, that's certainly what we anticipate. Um, you know, I, I am going to obviously say to you that if we find the car parks being abused by, I don't know, by people parking there all day, and you know, that, and that we find that customers can't get in and out and, and find parking spaces, then you know, at some point in the future, we would. Review what's what's it. the usual pattern, but though, Deborah, in terms of this type of store in this type of location for for parking? It's usually, f you know, free for as long as you need, yeah. even though it's only relatively small, eighty-five car parking spaces with, no, a, with a busy summer trade along the 170 when yeah. you get a lot of traffic. We think that's absolutely adequate and just sort of reserving, yeah. you know, in case at some point in the future the store manager finds that, it, you know, it, it, 
customers can't get in and out, at which point he's probably going to say, look, we need to make some restrictions here. But, but you know, that could be anything from two to four hours. And it's normally done in discussion with the town centre to say, you know, what do you think is reasonable? But it's also something that the council could condition if they wanted to. You know, if it's something that people were concerned about, it's something that could be conditioned. So, yeah. And uh, so in terms of the bill... And actually, it, when we've been talking to people, most, pe most people I've spoken to about parking have taken a sharp intake of breath and said, oh, yeah, it's, it's difficult to park. So I think, you know, free parking should be a... Oh, yeah, it is. I mean, there's certainly an issue of parking in, in Kirby Moorside, mm -hmm. for sure. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, you know, the there's, there's concern is with a free parking situation, you know, but the shopkeeper's also saying that, you know, you go down there and you don't come up because you've got the free parking, so you do all your local shopping, mm -hmm. all your food shopping down there, and there's no need to come back up. But we've had that discussion, and, and you know, potentially it won't happen. So, um, so the build would take how long, roughly, do you think, in terms well, of once, once the, you got on the site? It's quite quick. Site, yeah, it's about six months. Um, right. Because we do as much sort of assembly as we can off site. Um, yeah, and sure, it's we a do kit type we, yeah, thing. Just try and minimise disruption um, to, to local residents as much as possible. I mean, the store itself, one element we haven't really touched on are the sort of the, the environmental features of the store. Um, I don't know if that's something that, that would be of interest to people, but for us, um, as a business, we've got um, we've got very stretchy and tough targets um, and, and ambitions to be a zero carbon business by 2030, 2050, 50. oh yeah, 2050. 2050? 2050. Well, across the whole of our estate. You're kidding, across the whole of our estate. Well, yeah, but it's quite a long time, 2050, but anyway. Well, but um, th that is quite... We'll probably a, run out of fuel before then, but anyway. It's quite, that is quite a challenging target the whole business. I don't think any of the other retailers have got um, targets quite that stretching. But um, one, of, one of the elements that... Well, a number of elements that we're bringing into the, the store design here are things like um, uh, construction from sustainably sourced timber, um, a lot of natural light, which of course is nice for the people that work in the store and also nice for mm -hmm. customers, um, wind catchers on the roof to um, assist with the, the natural sense. ventilation. No, I, I could go yeah. on, but anyway, yeah. you get the idea. Yeah, great, great. Well, well, like I say, thank you very much. No, thank, for thank, thank you for the opportunity. For sitting in front of the camera. I think we should see your face. See your face. Of Peter. Can see me, yes. Can thank you very see? much. <laughs> <laughs> very low tech. You'll recognise him if you've been to the exhibition. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sure. But yeah, thank you very much. No, indeed. thanks for your time. Appreciate Cheers. it. And hopefully we can keep up the dialogue yeah, as, as things continue. Do. Great. Thank you. Thanks.